This is Gordon Ramsay, one of the most famous chefs in the entire world. Love is raw. Where's the last He's also my favorite chef, and my dream is to one day cook a meal with him. But there's a problem. I am so bad at cooking, it's actually a safety hazard for him to be in the kitchen with me. Which is why I traveled all the way to London, to the Gordon Ramsay Academy. This is where I'll be spending the next seven days learning how to cook from some of the best chefs in the entire world. But before I do that, I gotta show y'all where my skill level actually is. And the only way to do that is by cooking. I'm just gonna make a super simple chicken dish. To be honest, I think the chicken looks pretty good, but I'm gonna need a real chef to judge it. Hello, Chef Jockey. This is James Jockey Petrie, the executive development chef for Gordon Ramsay, AKA Gordon's right-hand man. So if I wanna ever cook with Gordon, I have to impress this guy first. Oh, wow, ooh. Oh, wow, look at that. Wow, wait, what do you mean? What? The chicken was raw. You've gotta be kidding me. It looked good. I think you uh, need to get started on the academy. Now, since Chef Jockey was the closest person I knew to Gordon, I had to let him know my dream of one day cooking with him. That is a big ask. Yeah. Well, you come to the, the best place. I'm gonna task you this week to learn to cook a dish to impress me. No. <laughs> now I have exactly one week to prepare. I'm gonna be taking as many classes at the academy as possible, and one of the dishes I'll learn is what I'll make for Chef Jockey. So this is Chef Rob, and he's going to be teaching the first class that I'm taking today, and we're making the classic English breakfast. I'll take you through what we're gonna do, uh, okay. and then I'll guide you step by step, um, and then I'm sure you'll absolutely nail it. It'll be fine. This dish is pretty simple. All you gotta do is chop the mushrooms, put them in the oven, peel potato, grate potato, squeeze potato, turn potato into hash browns, cook sausage, cook blood pudding, sear tomato, cook ham, slice crust off bread, toast bread. <gasps> Jeez, that's a lot of steps. Now after all of those steps, there was still one more that if I messed up, it would ruin the entire dish. The whole breakfast relies on the eggs being perfect. So if the eggs aren't runny, you fail the breakfast. So if I mess this up, Gordon hates me. Great. To make perfect eggs, they need to be cooked slowly on a low heat. And if the temperature is wrong, the eggs will be burned and the texture will be completely ruined. But of course, Chef Rob's eggs looked perfect. And there you have it, a proper English breakfast. Oh, that's so nice. Obviously, I had to taste it. I've never had an English breakfast before, but I don't think I'd find another one that tops this. The only one that will top this is yours. You don't believe that. I do, I do. Okay, now it's my turn. First thing I had to do was prep the mushrooms, then sear the sausage and peel the potato. So far, so good. Oh, I caught it. I caught it. Now, since this dish had so many steps, it was really easy to mess up since I kept forgetting what I had to do. Oh, that's a lot browner than yours. And while I was anxiously focused on perfecting the different parts of my breakfast, I forgot my hash browns. I forgot about that. Yeah, I was off to a pretty bad start. Luckily, my hash browns still turned out okay. That, oh, dude, that looks good! And now that all of the parts of my English breakfast are done, it was time for the final step, the eggs. If I mess this up, the entire dish is ruined. Whoa, okay, I, we're fine, we're fine, we're fine. Luckily, no shells got in the eggs. They were cooking on a low heat, and once the bottoms were set, I started basting it with oil, and thankfully, they came out looking great. Done. For your first English breakfast. Yes! It looks good. First time you've ever done it? Yeah. Don't cook much at home? Yeah. That's awesome. Time to see if this is really good or not. Now, in order to get a real brutal review, I had to get a complete stranger to try it and give me their honest opinion. It's a polite eight and a half. Eight and a half? That's pretty good. Guys, after getting a review like that, my confidence went through the roof. But even though I felt pretty good about that score, a simple dish like the English breakfast wouldn't be enough to impress Chef Jockey, which is why I took a burger class next. This is actually gonna be a group class, so if I'm the only one to mess up, that's gonna be so embarrassing. Now, before we started on the burgers, we actually made a tomato relish with all of the vegetables that I prepped. And once everyone's sauce was done, I realized something. Because everyone came to class coupled, I feel so single right now. My girlfriend's back in the US. Can't wait for dinner for one. But even though I was sad and jealous of all of these stupid couples, I still had a burger to make. Then we made a special mayonnaise with dill, smoked paprika, and some mustard. And look, there's me, alone in a room filled with couples. I look like I'm having a great time. 
Since the burgers were made from scratch, we had to combine the meat by slapping it together with our hands. The goal for the burger was medium rare, and since all of the ingredients were already laid out, all I had to do was assemble it. After assembling, everyone's burgers looked great. Now all I wanted to know is, does my burger taste just as good as it looks? I have high hopes for this one, so I would probably say it's around about the Okay, cool, thank you. Turns out my burger had too much sauce, it was overcooked, and it didn't impress Chef Rob at all, which means that Chef Jockey also wouldn't be happy with this. On day two, I decided to take as many classes as I could to find the dish that I could make for Chef Jockey. I got to butcher a fish, Kind of gross, by the way. I took an Indian class where I got to cook with spices I had never even heard of, and I even made some amazing desserts. High key though, those brownies were so good, someone had to get them away from me, otherwise I would have gained like 50 pounds. But even after all of those classes, I still couldn't find the dish that would impress him. Until... You should try making the beef wellington, or the risotto, that one's my favorite. It's a good idea, I miss you. I miss you too. And after talking to my girlfriend, I knew the next class I had to take. Gordon Ramsay's signature beef wellington. Good luck. Oh god, okay. <laughs> if I can do this well, this will be the number one contender for the dish that I make for Chef Jockey. First thing I had to do was chop up some mushrooms for the duck cell, which is basically like a mushroom paste, and I did pretty well, until... Whoa, 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 like this. Oh, not in one place. Oh, not in one place. oh, from above. And I literally already made a mistake. I didn't season my meat right. After prepping everything, I started searing my steak and made another mistake. The heat was too high and the place started smoking up. Oh, that's a lot of smoke. I'm fine. I'm good. While I was searing the steak, the mushroom duck cell went into the oven. While it's in the oven, I know that not everyone has time to make dishes like this from scratch, so that's where our sponsor HelloFresh comes in. Their newest fast and fresh recipes are so good and can be made in just 15 to 20 minutes. You're gonna get quality dishes like the ones I'm making for way less time. And you're gonna get all of those quality ingredients delivered right to your door. To be honest, guys, it saves me so much time. This is an easy way to eat well and save a ton of money. You're gonna love how fast, easy, and affordable it is to whip up all of these dishes from scratch right in your own kitchen. All of these ingredients travel straight from the farm to your house in less than seven days, so you know they're gonna be fresh. HelloFresh also has a 40 weekly recipes to choose from, so you are never gonna run out of new dishes to try. You'll be able to taste the new flavors every single week. Now to try HelloFresh for yourself, just go to hellofresh.com and use promo code DILLON65 for 65% off plus free shipping. Again, that's hellofresh.com, promo code DILLON65 for 65% off plus free shipping. Now back to the Wellington. Chef Andrew had me prep the rest of the ingredients for the duck cell, and then the steak was ready. This is quite... Dark. The Anyway, my heat was too high. Now in order to wrap the beef wellington, we actually had to make some thin pancakes. Apparently this was pretty difficult, so Chef Andrew had to show me the proper technique to swirling it into a perfect circle. Cool, I'm gonna leave you to it and I'll be back in a few minutes. Good luck. Oil? See you later. But after showing me, he just left. But you guys know, I've been killing it in some of the classes, so swirling the pancakes, piece of cake. Nah, I'm just kidding. Chef Andrew had to come back and help me. It's all good though, since I still got to show off and do a couple of cool pancake tricks. Look at her is. Oh, got it! Yeah, that's right. Now it's finally time to wrap the Wellington. First, the pancakes go down, then some pancetta, then the mushroom duck cell gets spread. After that, all I had to do was wrap up the Wellington like a Chipotle burrito. After it was wrapped, nice. we put the Wellington in the fridge so it can set, and we started to make the lattice. Once the Wellington was set, I brushed some puff pastry with some egg wash and wrapped the Wellington again. After that, I put on the beautiful lattice, brushed it with some more egg wash, and now it was time for the Wellington to go into the oven. Got it, all right. I think it looks pretty, pretty good. After cooking in the oven for about 30 minutes, the beef Wellington was ready. Time to pull it out and see how it looks. Oh. It's pretty well done. And you wouldn't serve that in a restaurant? No. Ah, uh, yeah, I messed up. Finding out that I messed up that Wellington Definitely sucked. Uh, what's this? And somehow after that, more no. of my mistakes just kept piling up. You left the string on the fillet. This was definitely not good enough to impress Chef Jockey, and I still had a long way to go. Definitely not happy with this one. But guys, here's the thing. Even though I royally messed that beef wellington up, if I can make a perfect beef wellington, it could also be the dish that impresses Chef Jockey. On day four, in order to make my next beef wellington perfect, I had to start with step one, improving my knife skills. I literally just took a bunch of different classes just so I can practice chopping things. It was tiring, but the good thing is I got to make some pretty bomb food along the way. 
Also, I had to break down an entire chicken with just a knife. Uh, yeah, that wasn't easy. On day five, I took a steak masterclass because I obviously overcooked the steak in my beef well. In this class, I really just want to be able to sear the steak perfectly and cook it to the perfect temperature, medium rare. Guys, I was stressing here. I really didn't want to mess up the crust. So I was just staring at the steak the entire time. I'm gonna go for flip one. I think that looks pretty good. Look at that steak. It looks so good. And I think that should be good. I still did kind of overcook it though, but that's okay because Chef B still said, Still delicious. Okay. Ready, ready, good. I'll take it. That's still a W in my book. Also on day five, I wanted some more experience working with different types of dough. So I took an Asian bao class and I even made fresh pasta dough. Now, even though I wasn't working with puff pastry, I'm positive I'll be a lot better at wrapping the beef wellington and just handling dough in general. On day six, I did something a little different. Over the last few days, I've only been taking classes to impress Chef Jockey. But after an exhausting week, there was one more person I wanted to impress. This class is risotto, which is my girlfriend's favorite dish. She's really wanted to try the food that I've been cooking all week, so I'm gonna learn how to make this just for her. As for the ingredients, it was just butter, onions, rice, wine, and one more special ingredient. After combining everything, Chef Andrew told me that the secret to a good risotto is to stir it constantly. Once the texture of the risotto was perfect, we plated it and everyone loved it. Mm. It's good? It's good. What, actually? Yeah, I'm gonna give it an eight out of 10. That's pretty good. Yes. I was gonna say exactly the same. Well, Let's go. After hearing the scores from Ella and Chef Andrew, I was pretty happy. Now all that's left to do is cook a meal for Chef Jockey. He's coming in a few hours, which means I only have one chance and there is zero room for error. First, I started by seasoning my steak, the way Chef Andrew taught me, making sure that I coated the entire piece of beef. Don't wanna overcook this, so let's just go ahead and get that down. Then I got a great sear on the filet thanks to the steak class with Chef B. Fantastic, yo, look at that. This is so much better than the first time I did this. Guys, I was feeling really confident with this and honestly, it felt like everything was coming together really well. I have everything made, we have the pancakes, parma ham, the mushroom stuff. I'm gonna be real with y'all. I forget all the fancy words. I even remembered to cut the little string off of the beef. I was not gonna make that mistake twice. I did still struggle a little while wrapping the Wellington, but it still turned out okay. Shape looks good. String is out. I just gotta pray. I'm feeling good about this one. Now it just needs to go into the fridge. Once it was done setting in the fridge, it got wrapped with a puff pastry. Then I added the lattice. And lastly, I just had to trim the sides to make sure it looked nice. And there we go. This is the final dish I've made at Gordon Ramsay Academy. Now it's time to put it in the oven. I was pretty nervous to put it in the oven since it was the first dish that I made by myself, but I trust everything that I learned here at the Academy. So now all that's left to do is wait for it to cook. Once the Wellington was ready, Chef Jockey arrived. Okay, Chef Jockey is outside the room right now. The Wellington has come out of the oven. Honestly, it looks pretty good. My biggest worry, is it cooked to a perfect medium rare? I messed it up the first time, but I've taken steak classes, I've taken baking classes, I've done just about everything. So if this isn't good, I'm gonna cry. Hey, Hello. Dylan. Hello. Hello, welcome back. Learn yeah. to cook for a week, and you've come back with me with what looks like Gordon signature beef wellington. Yes. You've gone big. So there's gonna be risks here, yeah? So we don't know until you cut in. Apart. Oh wow. Oh! Yo! Look at that! Look at that! Look at that! Yes! Guys, a chef jockey looks happy, and with the Wellington cooked perfectly, I plated it with some sides that Chef Rob taught me how to make. It's time for the moment of truth. Wow, you've done it. Seasoning on point. Oh, I see a smile! Cooking on point. Yes! Presentation on point. Let's go! You are the Wellington man. Yes! Holy cow! <laughs> I did it! I love it. it. I am very happy. Look at that. Look at this. It's beautiful. I'll put in a word for Gordon straight away. Now that I've impressed Chef Jockey, I was one step closer to my dream of cooking with Gordon. But before that, it was time to go home and cook a meal for one more person. First meal back from London. There you go. Wow. Oh. Maybe I couldn't cook a meal with Gordon this time, but at least I learned how to cook.